Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at some of the best idioms for IELTS speaking to describe your feelings. Are you feeling in the mood? In the mood for a bit of learning? Let's get straight into it. Hello, my name is Keith and I run the website IELTS Speaking Success and I want to help you speak better English give better answers and get a higher score in the IELTS speaking test. So today we're going to be looking at different idioms and idiomatic expressions to help you express feelings. This is really important, especially in part two, because if you remember, remember, if you remember, the part two task card often finishes with explain how you felt about it. And you have to de develop or talk about your feelings. And some candidates find it very difficult to say more than, I was sad, I felt happy, I felt nervous, I was excited. Now that's fine. But if you really want to get a higher level, a band seven and above, it would be good to use some more advanced vocabulary, some idiomatic expressions. That's what we're going to look at today. 12 different kind of feelings and tons of expressions. So get your pen and paper ready. Now I'd like first of all just to say a big thank you to all of you who are studying IELTS every day, working very hard and practicing and for following me and for helping me get, hooray, 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Wow, amazing. I would never have imagined that. So thank you very much, all of you, for following me. And also today, a big thank you to Cambly for sponsoring this video. Cambly is a fantastic online platform where you can find native English speaking teachers, in fact, native speaking teachers of many languages, but for you English teachers where you can practice your speaking, you can practice IELTS questions and answers. It's a great platform where you can choose where you want to study, what time you want to study. You can even choose the teacher that you would like to study with. So Cambly have given us a code. You can see the details over here and you will get a 10% discount above what they already have on the website. And that means you will get 10% for a month. Um, 19% if you study for three months and 32% if you want to study for 12 months. It's a great platform, great website. They also have lots of resources and courses for IELTS students. So go and check it out. Use your code to start practicing English. Now let's get into those feelings. The first feeling is I am or I was excited. So here are some expressions we can say. First, I was raring to go, which means I was ready to go. I was excited and ready to go, right? Um, when at the, at the start of the football match, I was really excited and I was raring to go. I was on the edge of my seat. And this is often when you're reading a book or watching a film that's very exciting and with a little bit of suspense and you're literally sitting on the edge of your seat, right? It means I'm excited. I was on the edge of my seat watching the horror movie. I was bouncing off the walls. Now, bouncing is boing, boing, boing. Now, if you imagine lots of little children inside your house during lockdown, and they're bouncing off the walls. They're full of energy, they're excited, they want to go out to play, and you can say, they were bouncing off the walls. I was bouncing off the walls as I was waiting to go to my favourite concert. I could hardly wait, or I couldn't wait to, meaning I was so excited I didn't want to wait, right? I could hardly wait to tell my friend about this new film. I couldn't wait to see the new film. So all of these are ways to talk about being excited. Now, number two, being impressed.
First of all, we've got it blew my mind. Now, blow is but it's also an explosion to blow up, right? Now, if something blows your mind, um, then it's very impressive, right? Also, we can say it blew me away. It was so impressive, right? I was speaking to my friend. He was telling me about astrophysics. It blew my mind. He blew me away with all his knowledge. I was bowled over. Bold is, hmm, <laughs> what is bold? Comes from cricket. Now, if you play cricket, you'll know that you, you throw the ball, you break your phone, you throw the ball over your arm. And if you're bowled over by something, then you are impressed by it. So my friend, the astrophysicist, I was bowled over by his knowledge. So now let's have a look at some part two questions and I'll give you a snippet of my answer showing you how I can use some of these expressions. The first question is, describe a performance you watched recently and explain how you felt about it. I recently saw my favorite pop band in concert. You know, for days before I was bouncing off the walls, I just couldn't wait to see them. On the day of the concert, they just blew me away. You know, I was bowled over by their energy and enthusiasm. And later, I couldn't wait to tell my friends about it. Right, you can see how I'm using them. Brilliant. Next question. Describe an exciting event you have been to and explain how you felt about it. <laughs> Obviously excited. I recently attended the release of a new film in my local cinema. For weeks before I was raring to go, I was so excited I could hardly wait. On the actual day, I finally got to see the film and it totally blew my mind. The acting was great, um, the plot had me on the edge of my seat all the way through. Nice, right? You can see how we're starting to use them. Let's move on to the next feeling. Next, the feeling of being angry. Now, there are quite a few expressions here. We have, for example, be beside yourself, be beside yourself with anger or fly off the handle. And that's when you get really angry really quickly, right? Imagine your flight is delayed, not for one or two hours, but for seven hours. You might be beside yourself with anger because you want to get to the destination quickly. And then imagine they don't give you any food and you have to sleep on the airport floor. You would probably fly off the handle. Mm -hmm. Then we've got three expressions with go, which are quite similar, right? To go spare, to get angry, to go through the roof, to get very angry to go ballistic, whoosh, to get really angry. Ballistic is like a ballistic missile, right? Imagine an explosion. That's how angry you get. So if somebody breaks your favorite computer or maybe your only computer, you might go spare. You might go through the roof. If you're really angry, you'll probably go ballistic. Two expressions slightly softer uh, are to lose my cool. I lost my cool, which means I didn't stay calm. So when the waitress knocked over my computer, <gasps> I lost my cool. I might go spare and shout at her or him. Did I say waitress? Her. <laughs> Another one, my patience was pushed to the limit. So my patience was pushed to the limit and it broke right? So I got angry when I was waiting for the flight and it was delayed another hour and another and another hour. My patience was pushed to the limit. Finally, I went through the roof. I was so angry. And the last one, which is 
quite poetic but nice is it makes my blood boil. Imagine how angry you are if your blood inside your body is boiling like it's so hot because when we get angry, we get hot. So again, somebody breaks your computer. Oh, it makes my blood boil or it made my blood boil. Great. Let's have a look at these in the context of a part two question. Describe a time somebody apologized to you and explain how you felt about it. Well, last week, my friend borrowed my favorite book, right? And then he lost it. Initially, I was beside myself with anger. I mean, I'm not one to fly off the handle, right? But that book had sentimental value for me. I calmed down later and accepted his apology. Next, describe a time when someone didn't tell you the truth about something and explain how you felt about it. So when I bought this software, the salesman said it could be used with any computer. And when I realized later it was not the case, I just went spare. Seriously, I nearly went through the roof. It makes my blood boil when salespeople blatantly lie. Next. Describe an important journey that was delayed and explain how you felt about it. Last month, my flight to Rome was delayed for 10 hours. I was so annoyed. And when they refused to give us any food, well, I, I lost my cool. And then when I spoke to the representative, she was so unhelpful, I just went ballistic and I started shouting at her. Now, I'm normally a calm person, but at that time, my patience was really pushed to the limit. I just wanted to get to Rome. Great. Let's move on now. The next feeling, being frustrated. Here we've got some expressions which are similar in meaning. Let's begin. It got on my nerves or it gets on my nerves. And this is just when something annoys you or irritates you. If it annoys you a lot, then you can say it drove me up the wall. It drove me, drive, it drove me or pushed me up the wall. We've had going through the roof, right? Now this one <laughs> is driving me up the wall. Similarly, we've got it drove me round the bend. So it pushed me around the bend. All of these meaning it really frustrated and annoyed me. Imagine, if you will, you're sat in a coffee bar reading your book, nice and easy, relaxed. The person next to you starts whistling. Oh, it really got on my nerves when they started whistling. And then the person starts tutting. <laughs> it drove me up the wall. What are they doing? And then finally they began humming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oi! <laughs> it drove me round the bend when they were humming. Now, if you are angry or frustrated, you might go and tell them what to do, right? Tell them to be quiet or tell them what you think about the situation. If you want to tell them your feelings, you can say, I gave them a piece of my mind. Now, a piece of your mind is a thought or a feeling. I know your thoughts are in your mind, your feelings in your body, but we say, I gave them a piece of my mind because I told them what I was thinking about that situation, right? Listen, your humming is annoying me. Will you please stop? I gave him a piece of my mind. If the situation carries on and your frustration gets higher and bigger and stronger, you might say, I was banging my head against the wall. Now, you're not literally banging your head against the wall, but the feeling is the same and it's giving you a headache, right? 
So I've told this nice gentleman to stop humming, but then he starts, what does he start doing? But then he takes out his mobile phone and starts watching a YouTube video at full volume. I was banging my head against the wall. What can I do, right? <laughs> and that was the last straw. I just went over there, I gave him a piece of my mind and I threw his phone out of the Starbucks coffee, cafe. <laughs> of course I didn't, but that was the last straw, right? That was the final thing that made me get really, really angry. Okay, all of these expressions, let's see how we can use them when we answer a part two question. Describe a time when you could not use your mobile phone and explain how you felt about it. Well, when I was at the bank last week, they told me I couldn't use my mobile phone there. You know, these silly rules really get on my nerves. So I asked them why and they just said, well, that was the rule. It just drove me up the wall because I needed to make a call, but I didn't want to lose my place in the queue. These kind of rules really try my patience. If I had had more time, I would have complained to the manager and given him a piece of my mind. Great. Now, you'll have noticed there the expression, it really tried my patience. To try my patience is similar to push my patience to the limit. And this is all about the feeling of being impatient. Some other expressions are... I was running out of patience. I was at my wit's end, completely out of patience. Or I was at the end of my tether. Also, I have no patience left. All of them meaning a similar thing. And I think in America they say a lot, um, I was at the end of my rope. So really a tether is a rope, right? Imagine you're in the sea, you're drowning and they throw you a rope and you're pulling up the rope, but then you get to the end. You're at the end of your rope, right? You have no patience left. I was at the end of my tether. Let's have a look how we can use these in some part two answer. Describe a time when an activity you did was delayed due to the bad weather and explain how you felt about it. So some friends and I had organised a picnic in the countryside and we had been looking forward to it for weeks. And then on the day, we were about to leave and it started to rain. Would you believe it? A short shower, or so we thought. So we decided to wait for it to stop. Two hours later, it was still raining and we were running out of patience. And then suddenly a storm broke out that was the last straw. In the end, we had, to pos we had to postpone the whole event to another weekend. Next question. Describe a crowded place you have been to. To be honest, I don't like crowds. So I was a little nervous when my brother invited me to watch a football match with him. The stadium was packed full, right? People behind us were pushing and it was getting on my nerves. After 30 minutes of pushing, I was at my wit's end. Seriously, I was banging my head against the wall. I was about to go ballistic with these guys and my brother told me to calm down and we decided to leave the game early. Nice. Let's move on and let's look at how we can talk about being bored. So talking about being bored, some expressions we can use are to be fed up. And to be fed up is a bit irritated, but bored. And if you're really fed up, I'm fed up to the back teeth, right? The back teeth, right at the back. Why? I don't know, but I'm fed up to the back teeth. I'm really bored, right? Or we can also say, if you're really bored, I'm bored to tears. Maybe you, you are so bored, 
you start to cry. I'm bored to tears. Also, I'm bored to death. I'm bored to death. Of course, you don't actually die, but we often use to death, right? I'm starving to death. I'm really hungry. I'm bored to death. I'm really bored. So we can use all of these. For example, if you're waiting to see the doctor and you're waiting a long time, oh, you might get fed up. You might be fed up to the back teeth. I was bored to tears waiting to see the doctor. I was bored to death waiting to see the dentist. I was fed up to the back teeth having to wait for everybody. Also, when you're bored and a little bit annoyed, you can be cheesed off. You can be cheesed off. Yes, cheese, like camembert, emmental, crumbly Lancashire, all kinds of cheese. If I am cheesed off, then I'm a bit annoyed but bored, right? I was cheesed off with my friend. I was cheesed off with the doctor because I had to wait so long. <laughs> and if that frustration and boredom is building, you might say, I've had it up to here. Up to here, this is the limit. Similar to the expression, that was the last straw that kind of made you really annoy, annoyed or angry. If you're so bored and fed up, you say, I've had it up to here, waiting for that dentist. What is he doing in there? <laughs> Let's have a look how we can use some of these in an answer. Describe a time you got bored when you were with others and explain how you felt about it. A few weeks ago, I went to a party with a friend of mine. I was a bit cheesed off with him, actually, because he knew I didn't want to go, but he wouldn't go alone. Anyway, we went to the party and to be honest, I was bored to death. I mean, there was no music no food, I didn't know anybody, I was just fed up to the back teeth and I told my friend, listen, I have had it up to here and I was ready to go home. <laughs> now let's move from some of these negative feelings to a happy feeling. Let's talk about happiness. Now, there are lots of nice and interesting expressions for happiness. First of all, I was over the moon. <laughs> over the moon in the sky. Crazy, but true if you're happy. And I was tickled pink. I was tickled pink. If somebody tickles you, then you start laughing and you probably go very pink, right? Because you're laughing so much. I was tickled pink when I found out I had won the lottery. Similar to the moon, we talk about the clouds. I was on cloud nine when I realized I had won the lottery. And also we can talk about, I was thrilled about something, was it's excitement and happiness together. So if you're really happy, you can say, I'm thrilled to bits. I was thrilled to bits to win the lottery. We can be, now we can have a feeling of happiness, right? And we can also be happy with something or happy with somebody, right? Some expressions here are, it made my day. When I got a present from my friend on my birthday, it, it made my day. Or it was music to my ears. When my wife told me she was taking me out for dinner, it was music to my ears. Coming back to doctors, it was just what the doctor ordered. Now, this is nothing to do with doctors, but it means it's just what I needed. It was something I was wanting and it's made me happy. Okay, doesn't have to be medicine. Maybe I've been a bit fed up and cheesed off lately with all of the work. So when my wife said, I'm going to take you to dinner, I was over the moon. It made my day and it was just what the doctor ordered, right? It was just what I needed to cheer up. Let's have a look about 
not about, let's have a look at some of these expressions in some part two answers. Describe an occasion when you celebrated your achievement. A few years ago, I finished my master's degree um, and I was over the moon. It had taken me four years because I had to work at the same time. And when I finally got that certificate, oh, I was tickled pink. As you can imagine, it made my day. <laughs> and it did, really. Describe an interesting conversation you had with someone. I recently had an interesting conversation with the lady who works in my local bookshop. She told me that as a loyal customer, I had won a prize. I was surprised, but it was music to my ears. It turned out I had won a hundred euros of book vouchers. Well, needless to say, I was on cloud nine. I actually needed to buy some new books for my daughter. So it was just what the doctor ordered. And later, when I gave my daughter some of the new storybooks, she was thrilled to bits. Let's move on and talk about being thankful. So let's look at these expressions for being thankful. There are different things we can say, right? We can say to be appreciative, appreciative. It's a sh sound. I was appreciative. That's one word, appreciative. That means I was thankful. We can also say I was eternally grateful. When my friend helped me paint our new home, I was eternally grateful. I was very appreciative. Now, if you're really thankful and something surprises you, you might say to be at a loss for words, right? So when my friend gave me a computer for my birthday, wow, I was at a loss for words. I was eternally grateful, but I was at a loss for words. And also, of course, we can say I couldn't thank him enough. So when he gave me the computer as a present, I couldn't thank him enough. Let's have a look at these inside, inside, in a part two answer. Describe a time you lost something and finally got it back. When I recently lost my wallet on the way to work, I was so surprised actually to get it back. So a man had found it. He'd seen my address and bought it to my home. I was so appreciative. And to be honest, I was at a loss for words. So I invited him in for some tea and gave him a reward to show, you know, that I was eternally grateful. You see, my wallet had all my ID cards, photos, credit cards. So I was tickled pink that I got it back and I just couldn't thank him enough. Now, another feeling that we have quite often, especially with IELTS, is being nervous, right? Especially with special events, speaking out loud, public speaking, exams. So we get nervous, we worry, and we can say, I was worried sick about it. It's almost to the point where you're worried and you are sick but it's idiomatic. I was worried sick about the exam. To have butterflies. Now, the long expression is to have butterflies in your stomach. And that's that little tingling feeling in your stomach when you're a little bit nervous. So maybe before a job interview, you might have butterflies in your stomach. Or you can just say, I had butterflies before the interview. When you actually go into an interview, you have to speak. And if you're nervous about speaking, you may say, I got tongue tied. Imagine your tongue tied in a knot. You can't speak smoothly, right? So I was tongue tied or I got tongue tied. Um, and if the feeling of being nervous is quite strong or very strong, and you're getting more and more anxious or nervous or worried, 
then you might say, I was getting worked up. Work worked up. I was getting worked up. And it doesn't mean not work out like at the gym, but work up to get worked up is to get nervous and really anxious. So as you get closer to your interview or your job presentation or your exam, you might get worked up, right? In addition, if it's really strong, you might say, I was tearing my hair out. <laughs> Not me, a bit difficult, but if you, you tear your hair out, you're really nervous, you're anxious about something. A little bit of frustration maybe as well. You'll notice there is quite a bit of overlap between a lot of these expressions, right? Because emotions and feelings, they are mixed up a little bit. So I was studying for my exam, but I, I just knew I couldn't find the right words. I was tearing my hair out, getting all worked up about it. If the feeling is a bit softer, you could say I was on edge, on edge, right? Not on the edge of your seat. No, I was on edge. I was on edge is a little bit nervous, right? Sometimes if you say I was on edge before the exam, that can be quite good because a little bit of nerves is a good thing. I was on edge waiting to do my IELTS speaking test. <laughs> Great, let's see these in action. Describe a time you met someone for the first time and explain how you felt about it. I will never forget when I got my first real job and I met my new boss. To be honest, I was worried sick about it because, right, first impressions are so important. So I spent ages in the morning thinking about what to say. I had butterflies. And I was getting a bit worked up, to tell you the truth. Initially, when I met him, I was a bit tongue-tied, but then I chilled out and everything went quite smoothly. Describe a challenge you faced recently and explain how you felt about it. Well, a real challenge I faced last year was giving a presentation to about 300 students. I wouldn't say I was tearing my hair out, but I was certainly on edge. I always get nervous when I speak in front of large crowds. In the end, it went very well, despite the fact I had butterflies at the beginning. So after all of that nervousness, let's relax. And how do we talk about relaxing? Well, some common idiomatic phrases are to chill out. You're not really cold, but you chill out. Or to kick back. You don't kick anybody, hopefully, but you just kick back. To put your feet up. Again, maybe you literally put your feet up on the table, but it's idiomatic. To put your feet up is to relax. Likewise, if you've got hair, you can let your hair down. The idea that, I guess for many women, if they're at work, they put their hair up in a bun, and when they're relaxing, you let your hair down. But just to relax, take it easy, to let your hair down. Another one, to unwind. And this comes from the idea of uh, a coil or a spring that is wound up very, very tight, it's very tense. And when it unwinds, it relaxes. Let's have a look how we can use these in an answer. Describe a leisure activity that you do with your family. Well, one of my favorite pastimes that I do with my family is play cards together. It's a great way to chill out and kick back we can just chat about what we've been doing lately at the same time as we play. So that's why I really do enjoy putting my feet up and playing cards with the family. Describe a place where you read and write, not your home, and explain how you feel about this place. Well, 
I often go to my local library to read a book or catch up on my blog writing. I find the silence and the peaceful atmosphere just helps me chill out and unwind. Nice. Next one. Describe a singer or a band that you like and explain how you feel about their music. Well, I love listening to my old jazz CD collection. After a hard day's work, I just find it an ideal way to relax and let my hair down. The music is so calming, really, and I can just put my feet up and chill. <laughs> put my feet up and chill. We're going to move on to another rather gloomy feeling. Let's talk about sadness. Hmm. OK, I've got three idiomatic expressions here. The first one is to be down in the dumps. Down in the dumps. In the plural, down in the dumps. The dumps for us in English, that's like a rubbish dump or a garbage dump where you put all the rubbish. But apparently it also comes from the Dutch word domp or the German word dumpf, which mean kind of uh, dull, depressed, heavy, something like that. So it just means to be very, very sad. If, you know, if you fail your exam, oh dear, if you fail something like your driving test, you might be down in the dumps for quite a few weeks. Similarly, we can say down in the mouth. Down in the mouth. Where does that come from? Who knows? But down in the mouth is very sad again, right? If nothing's just working properly for me and I feel fed up, a bit cheesed off, I might also be down in the mouth. And finally, I'm smiling, even though it's about sadness, to feel blue. And I love this expression, to feel blue, because the blues music I love, but it's all about oppression, depression, sadness. So if you feel blue, then you're feeling sad, right? What do you do when you feel blue? Listen to the blues. Listen to some nice sprightly music. Let's see how we can use these in an answer. Describe an important journey that was delayed and explain how you felt about it. So I was due to catch a flight home to attend my friend's wedding. Unfortunately, the flight was delayed. Surprise, surprise. As I was waiting in the airport, I began to feel more and more down in the dumps. Um, and when I realised, gosh, I was going to miss the whole ceremony, well, I was totally down in the mouth. It was such a shame, right? I've never felt so blue. And it's true. Fancy that. Missing your friend's wedding ceremony. And on that happy note, I'm going to give you a final tip, <laughs> two tips to finish up on how we use these expressions. When you're talking about feelings, um, as we mentioned, feelings can, you can mix feelings. You might be a bit happy, a bit sad, a bit nervous, a bit relaxed. Sometimes they're mixed up. So if you don't have to choose one, right, a nice expression is to say, well, I had mixed feelings about it. Mixed feelings. Well, I had mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, I was nervous, but on the other hand, I was happy it was all over, right? Nice. Tip number two is to use the negative of an idiom. So if you can't think of an idiom, for example, about being sad, you can always use a negative of a positive, happy one, right? So I failed my exam, and to tell you the truth, I just wasn't over the moon about it. Ha-ha! Very clever, right? Or, well, when I failed my driving test, to be honest, I wasn't on cloud nine at all. 
<laughs> it's a brilliant tip. Just use the negatives and you've doubled your emotional feeling idiomatic expressions. Now a quick word of warning. With idioms and idiomatic expressions, you need to practice lots. Don't start using them in the exam until you really know how to use them. If you don't use them correctly, it can sometimes backfire, right, and have a negative effect. So make sure you see them in context two or three times and get used to using them. Get feedback from a teacher, if possible, on whether you're using it correctly. Um, I'm cramming in lots of expressions into a very short answer, um, just so you can see a lot. But of course, when you're giving your answer in the test, don't cram in lots of idioms and idiomatic expressions. Just sprinkle one or two, right? Not too many. Great. And so my final word today is thank you. I'm eternally grateful to the sponsors Camberley for sponsoring this video. Go and check it out. Remember, you can get a 10% discount on all of their monthly plans. Go in there, find yourself a teacher and start practicing. You can even be practicing all of these great idiomatic expressions to get your speaking better and better and better. The secret is in the practice. So thanks again very much to everybody at Camberley for their sponsorship. Great. Finally, just to remind you, if you want more free resources to help your speaking for IELTS, go to the website IELTSSpeakingSuccess.com. There's lots of information and videos and ebooks and things you can download. I look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, have a fantastic day. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye.